Hello, White Mountain Elementary students. It's Miss Ferguson, and we're back today with Hank the Cow Dog, The Case of the Raging Rottweiler. We are now on Chapter 11. You'll never guess who showed up. Miguel went into the office and came back with a bowl and a can of something. Was it soda pop? Yes, it was soda pop. He set the bowl down in front of me and poured the pop into it. Then he stood over me and pointed to the bowl. That's for you, Hank. Soda pop. Good stuff. Take a drink. I looked up into his eyes and whapped my tail on the floor. He would brought a soda pop just for me? Gee, what a nice guy. I mean, I'd always had a fondness for soda pop, especially on hot summer days. But on our ranch, I seldom got any. The cowboys are kind of stingy, don't you know? And, well, this was very touching. A fresh, cool soda pop just for me. I leaned forward and gave it a sniffing. It smelled cool and refreshing. Wonderful. My mouth began to water and I found myself uh, licking my chops. I rolled my eyes up to Miguel just to be sure this wasn't a trick. He nodded and pointed to the bowl. For you, doggy. Well, okay. I mean, if he was buying the drinks, I sure wasn't going to insult him by turning him down. I started laughing. It was even better and sweeter and refreshing in jur than I had supposed. Great stuff. I lapped it all down and even licked the bottom. Huh? In a flash, Miguel reached down, picked me up, and started, Hey, what was the deal here? He started shaking me. He shook me several times, pretty hard, and then set me back down on the cement floor. Now, Hank, he said, shooting a grin at Slim, I command you to burp. What? burp hey i couldn't just come on doggy let's hear a big one gee i hated to disappoint him but who can all at once i felt a rumbling in my stomach and something began moving up the stovepipe of my <sighs> burp my eyes leaped up was that me the men who had gathered around us broke into laughter and applause Miguel beamed a smile, clapped his hands together, and snatched the two-dollar bills off the floor. Slim leaned his head back and laughed out loud. You cheated, Miguel, but that's okay. It was worth a buck. Miguel leaned over and patted me on the head. Good dog, Hank. You are very smart. Stay away from Pico. Well, I, I hardly knew how to respond. I mean, we ranch dogs aren't used to so much kindness and attention. And heck, if Miguel wanted me to... To bring me another soda pop. Suddenly they were all gone. Back to work fixing tires, clinging and banging and making hissing sounds, and I found myself all alone. Oh well, one minute a star, the next minute just another dog on the street. But it had been nice basking in the lime juice and enjoying my brief moments of, <clears throat> excuse me, fame. They were making so much racket in there, it was hurting my ears, so I headed outside. And let me hasten to add that my leaving the shop had nothing to do with the so-called dog-eating cat. It had suddenly occurred to me that Drover needed another lecture on, well, something or other. He could always use another lecture. So I, well, I'm just going to say it had nothing to do with the cat. A blue pickup pulled up in front of the shop. A man came inside rolling a tire. We passed and I had to get out of his way, otherwise he might have run over me with his tire. I hopped up into the back of Slim's pickup and saw Drover. What was he doing now? His eyes were wide open and he seemed to be jerking his head back toward... Uh, my eyes went to the back of the blue pickup and I found myself staring right into the ugly face of... You'll never guess who it was. Bruno the, Bruno the Boxer? Nope. Rufus the Doberman Pincher? Nope. Rambo the Great Dane? Wrong again. No, it was the face of a Wattweiler. And I happen to know the guy. His name was Bruiser. Are you shocked? I knew you would be. But the tip-off was the blue pickup, don't you see? I had identified it the very moment, okay, maybe I'd missed that little clue. But the important thing was that Bruiser was sitting in a pickup, not ten feet away from us. And he looked mad, real mad. He recognized me. 
So, it's you again. All at once I felt myself um, sinking and shrinking and slinking, shall we say, and wilting under the glare of that big ape. Yipes, who could look into such terrible eyes? And all at once I began to regret all the, um, well, um, rude and tacky things I had. Trover, don't say a word. Not one word. We have entered into a situation here that could prove to be very dangerous. Yeah, I know. Bruiser's voice cut through the silence like a chainsaw. Hey, you, dummy, come here. I shot a glance at Drover. His teeth were chattering. I think he's speaking to you, Drover. Oh my gosh, I knew we'd see him again. I knew you shouldn't have. What if he comes over here? What are we going to do? I cut my eyes from side to side. I had just noticed an important detail. Drover, do you see what I see? He's chained to the pickup. Look, see for yourself. Oh, well, I'll be darned. He is. He is. He's chained to the pickup. Do you understand the meaning of this? Well, let me think. It means that if we hide and keep quiet, he won't bust the chain and kill us. I gave him a stern glare. No, that's not what it means. It means that he's helpless and harmless. It means that he's just another wimpy mutt who couldn't hurt a fly. It means that we can give him more of what he deserves for trying to kill our helpless baby deer. A goofy grin spread across Drover's mouth. I'll be darned, I never thought of that, you mean? Yes, exactly. I gave him a sly wink. Do you remember the routine? The same one we used on Bruno the Boxer? That's the one. I gave him a pat on the shoulder. You go first. Well, are you sure? It's kind of a small chain. Don't worry, Drover. No dog is strong enough to break a chain. Go for it. So... He hopped down to the ground and walked around to the side of Bruiser's pickup. He looked up into Bruiser's ugly face. Oh, hi there. We were just wondering if you would mind if we wet down your tires. Bruiser's eyes widened. Stay away from my tires, you little shrimp, or I will wring your neck. Jover swallowed hard. Yeah, but you're on a chain and Hank says you can't break it. Hank's brain can't keep up with his mouth. Jover glanced at me and giggled. Yeah, but I think we'll make your marks on your tires and we're going to see what happens. Jover took the left side and I took the right. We slapped a good strong mark on all four tires. Just as I had, had suspected, the cowardly Rottweiler growled and grumbled, but he didn't lunge against the chain. Even as dumb as he was, he knew he couldn't break it. We, grew, we, we regrouped near the door on the driver's side. Nice work, Jover. I don't know as I've ever seen you do a better job of marking tires. He grinned and wiggled his stub tail. Yeah, it was fun. You reckon we ought to give him a second coat? He glanced up at Bruiser. So did I. What we saw shocked us both. See, you probably thought Bruiser would be near crazy with anger, right? Furious and ready to tear us apart. Well, he wasn't. What we saw were tears shining in the corners of his eyes. Honest, I'm not kidding. Drover and I ex exchanged puzzled glances. This was not what we had expected. Then Bruiser spoke. You guys are right. I'm just a big, ugly lunk. I'm a bad dog. I've always been a bad dog, and everybody hates me. But you know what, fellas? Inside this huge, ugly body... There's a little Scotty Terrier who just wants one thing in the world. He looked up to the sky. A friend. Again, Drover and I exchanged glances. I could see that Drover's lower lip was beginning to tremble. Well, and heck, maybe mine was too. I mean, this was kind of touching. He went on. You hate me. I know you do. And I'm glad you hate me. I deserve it. But, he glanced away and bit his lower lip. Then there's the story nobody ever heard about old Bruiser. I was orphaned as a pup and raised by junkyard dogs. Every morning and every evening, they, well, they beat me. Jover's mouth was hanging open. They beat you? Why, that's terrible. 
big tears slid down his big, ugly face. Yes, they beat me and they made me mean. Over and over they said to me, they said, Bruiser, you're no good. You're nothing but a rotten Rottweiler. And you know what, fellas? After a guy hears that over and over, day after day, he begins to... He couldn't finish. He broke down and started crying, sobbing. I found myself looking at Drover. What have we done? Drover was beginning to cry. I don't know, but I feel awful. Yeah, me too. What a louse I've turned out to be. I told the poor guy that he walked like a fat duck. Yeah, and then you showed him your hiney. Yes, and I regret that now. I'm sorry I went on his tires, and I wish I could take it all back. I know, but it's too late, Drover. It's water under the tire. I heaved a sigh. Well, there's only one thing left to do. What? Tell me, I'm ready to do anything. Well, let's jump up into the back of his pickup and grant him his fondest whist. We'll become his friends. We'll convince him that he's just, not just a rotten dog, that he's really a wonderful fellow. Drover was staring at me. You mean, you know, I don't think that's such a great idea. Hey, you said you were ready to do anything. If we surround this guy with warmth and friendship, Drover, it could change his whole life. What's more, it would make us feel better knowing that we had befriended such a miserable wretch. Yeah, but you know this old leg of mine. Oh, it's giving me fits, and well, I don't think I could make the jump. Okay, fine. Have it your own way. You'll be sorry, of course. I'll get all the credit for turning his life around, and you, Drover, you'll have to live with the fact that you marked the tires of a helpless broken dog. Well, I only marked two of them. Yes, two, t two tires, Drover, and that was just enough to break his heart. I hope you're happy. It works for me. What? I said, I hope I can live with the guilt. I marched around to the back of the pickup and prepared to begin my errand of mercy, salvaging what was left of poor Bruiser's life and self-esteemer. I hardly noticed that Drover had scrambled under Slim's pickup or that Pico was still watching. And that's the end of chapter 11, and I would like for you to join me tomorrow for our final chapter, chapter 12. Have a great day.